Shit, I'd have my werewolf thing up the whole time. Oh well. Hey everyone, welcome to the Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss role-playing games, so if that's something you're into, love to have you hit the subscribe button and that bell notification so that you know when my content is available. First things first, I look like a dirty hobo. As you can see by my wonderful five o'clock shadow, this is uh, about week four for me of quarantine. I'm just doing what I can to, uh, to not go outside and try to flatten that curve, as they say. So that means that uh, I haven't had to go out and I can work from home, so I don't go out. So I barely have been shaving and, uh, and it shows. And I didn't feel like shaving for today's video, so deal with it. So what am I gonna talk about today? I have some good news. Good news, everyone! Even though the quarantine is still running, the postal service up here in Canada is actually still running. And I have received the Near Space book. It's finally arrived in the mail. It is uh, slightly pushed in on the spine, as I have done a video before on how the Postal Service treats their packages. You can check that up here for delivery day. The joys that come with receiving a package and wanting to open it and what happens when it's not cared for in the best manners. So you can check that video out to see how that is. It's kind of fun. Today, we're gonna to do a quick review on Near Space. It's tipped forward so that the glare is, uh, is not blinding. First things first, this is a map of the Vescarium and all the planets within it. I love it. This is what uh, myself and a bunch of other Starfinder players were hoping to get. If you're into the Vescarium lore and you want to know what's happening with, uh, with that empire, this is definitely a must have for you. This book clocks in at about 158 pages, so just be aware of that. It's not, uh, it's not massive by any means, but what's contained in here is actually quite a lot. Basically, the first third of this book is all on the planets of the Vescarium, going uh, Vesk Prime, all the way up until uh, Vesk 8. They also talk about the Conqueror's Forge, which is the kind of big naval space thing. It's right there. So if you wanted to get, uh, if you want to get lots of lore, this is definitely the book to have. They also cover for another 60 pages or so, so another third of the book, they do talk about um, exploring near space and some of the planets that you could find in there. And then they do give some rules on how to create your own uh, create your own planet. So if you're doing some homebrew adventures, this is gonna be some great information for you. There's also some ideas for game masters in here as they give a couple of plot hooks that you could use to get your players to going out and exploring near space. So I really do like that. And they've covered, uh, they've covered a few of the planets in here as well. For the last third of this book, it's actually broken up into some smaller chunks. The last third of this book is gonna contain some options for starships. And there's a little bit more of information on some different variants of spaceship, some more options and expansion bays for your spaceships. So it's kind of nice to have that information there as well. If you're looking for Starship specific information, you're gonna have to wait until the Starship Operations Manual comes out. What I'm hoping is that the Starship Operations Manual is to space combat, which is incredibly complicated. And if you're looking for a little bit of help with running a Starship combat, please check out my series here where I am delving into space combat. Space combat is technical. It is a little clunky, so be aware of that, I suppose. So what I'm hoping for the Starship Operations Manual is that it does to Starship Combat what the Character Operations Manual did for player options, if that makes sense. I wanted to simplify things and make things a little bit easier and give some more options for Space Combat. As I mentioned about Starships, this one is called the Conqueror of Worlds. Right there. I like it. I wouldn't want to run into it in space, but I like it. For the back portion of this book, they have also given some more player options. There's several new race variants that you could use, uh, different builds for some existing races with already within the Starfinder universe. So there's some alternate builds for the Demace, some alternate builds for the Embry and the Gorons, some alternate builds and abilities for the Hobgoblins and the floaty space things. I don't even want to begin to try to pronounce this. The Asharus and the Patra. And there's a few more options for you Vesk players and folks who enjoy the Skittermander. There's some new options for you there as well. 
there is five new character themes that you can use in this near space supplement. The bureaucrat, giant blood, prisoner, quartermaster, and then the storm runner. One of the new themes that's actually most interesting to me would be this one, the giant blood. You actually have uh, the blood of giants running through your veins. And so you get to have extra strength and that's, yeah, extra, you're, you're strong and you're probably a little bigger than your average race height. They've also added five new archetypes that you can select for your character options as well. Archetypes are a little complicated, but they essentially replace certain attributes and certain abilities for your theme build. In some cases, they will replace all of them. Some cases, they will replace only some of them. One of my favorite new archetypes that's been, uh, that's been presented in this book, and this is gonna be for you Vesk players, a Doshko specialist. You're like a weapons master when it comes to the Doshko. It is your almost religion. That's the only weapon, I shouldn't say the only weapon that they will use, but it's a weapon that they are very skilled at using. I think this archetype is gonna be a lot of fun and give, uh, give some Vesk players some really neat options for their characters. There's some more weapons, there's some more fusions, there's a few more options for you in here. Uh, there's actually some more options in shields for those who want to actually have a physical shield instead of just a force field, like retractable and collapsible shields. I think those are really cool. For the last bit of this book, they have done some more spells. So they have given spells to the Mystic, they have given spells to the Technomancer, and they have given spells to the Witch Warper. What I am really impressed with with this new spell list is it solves a small problem that the Witch Warper had. The more I've been researching them and the more I've been looking into how they operate, the Witch Warper did not have a ton of damage dealing spells. They had a few, but nothing that was uh, nothing that's on par with Mind Thrust, as an example. The spells contained in this book will give the Witch Warper specifically, but it does give a few of uh, the other classes as well, the Mystic and the Technomancer. They do get some more options when it comes to dealing damage in area of effect. And there we have it, my Near Space review. I would give this book a solid four out of five stars. It contained lots of the information that I was hoping it would around, uh, specifically around the Vescarium and some of the planets within there as one of the characters that I'm playing right now is from the Vescarium. I've had very little to go on. And this does specifically go off of their planet. If you have the book, check out Vesk 6 because I like that planet. Any of the items and some of the fusions that I've found in this book, they haven't been revolutionary. Just a few more options other than the shields and, and things that I kind of, as items that I enjoyed, there wasn't really anything that really stands out there for me. For the spells though, as I mentioned, I'm really happy with some of the additions that they've made to the spells. And I think that they will be a fine addition to even low level characters who are taking first level spells. And it does solve a few of those uh, damage output problems that the Witch Warper has. So I was really happy to see that. So is this worth picking up? Well, at four to five stars for me, that's because of all of the information that's contained within this book has made me happy because it's given me some more information on what I was looking for. This is along the lines of the, of the, of the previous Pact Worlds book. If you enjoyed the Pact Worlds book, you will definitely enjoy Near Space. It does give a little bit more to chew on than the Pact Worlds does. For storytellers, this would be a nice to have. For players, it's not, it's not very necessary. I enjoyed the spells, the additions of the spells that were there, but you could make do without them. I would put it on your list if you have some extra cash sitting around and you want to get an extra, an extra book or an extra supplement, absolutely do that. Is it a must have? No, it's not. Is it a nice to have? Absolutely. For storytellers, it's going to give you so much more for your own personal stories. But as far as uh, for players who just want to get into the game and make a character, there's nothing in here that is a must have. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you know when my content is available. I put out videos every Monday and Thursday. If you enjoy role-playing games, then I welcome you to the channel. Thank you so much to my existing subscribers. I have lots more Starfinder content planned for all of you. I just don't do this as my full-time job, so it's, it's more of a part-time passion for me. Who knows, maybe one day I'll get there. Stay safe, everyone. Stay home if you can. And with that, 
Thanks for stopping by, everyone.